Hey everyone, welcome to part 2 of Pokemon Game Dev series in Unity. So in this video we will look at how to implement animations. So if you open the character sprite sheet in the sprite editor, you can see that we have all the frames to create walking animations in all four directions. So let's create the animations. First open the animation window, you can go to window animation. Let me just rearrange the window layout. Okay, I like to keep this layout when I'm animating because I want to be able to see the project animation and the scene window at the same time. So we need to create an idle animation and a walk animation for all the four directions. So click on the player and in the animation window, Click on create. I'll create a folder to store all our animations. And I'll name this animation idle down. And drag the first frame from the character sprite sheet to this animation. Okay, so idle animations are animations with only one frame. So now let's create a walk down animation. Click on create new clip. I'll call this walk down. So for the walk down animation, we will use sprites from character zero to character three. Okay, so these are all the sprites we need for our walk down animation. So drag these four to our animation window and if you hit play you can see that the animation is like really fast so in order to slow it down we can reduce the sample rate so if you don't see sample rate in your animation window just click here and select show sample rate so i'll change the sample rate to six and now if you play the animation you can see that the animation is much more slower, which is what we want. Okay, so next we'll create idle up and walk up animation. Call it idle up. So you can actually open the character sprite sheet in the sprite editor and find the idle up sprite. And when you click on it, you can see its name. So it's character 24. So we just have to find character 24. So here it is. I'll drag that to the animation window. Okay, now I'll create walk up animation. So for walk up animation, we need sprite from 24 to 27. So these are the sprites. I'll bring them in. And just like before, we'll change the sample rate to six. And hit play. So you can see that it is animating correctly. Next, I'll create idle right. And the idle right sprite is actually 13. So I'll drag that in. Next, I'll create walk right. So walk right is from 13 to 16. I'll drag them in and change the sample rate to 6. It's animating correctly. Next, I'll make idle left. So let's find the idle left sprite. It's 35. Okay, I'll drag them into the animation window. And next I'll create walk left. So walk le left is from 35 to 38. I'll name the sample rate to 6. 
and the animation is playing correctly. So we have created all the animations that we need. So let me just change the layout back to normal. Now if we look inside our animation player, we can see all the animations that we created and there is also an animated controller in here. Unity has automatically created this for us. And if you click on the player game object, you can see that a new component called animator is added and it's actually referencing this controller. So open the animator controller. So animator controllers are used to transition between multiple animations. So it's where we specify when to play walking animation, idle animation and all that. So instead of manually creating transition between all our animations, we'll use something called blend tree to do that for us. So let's delete all these animations from the controller. And first we need to create two float parameters, move X and move Y. So these parameters will control which animations should be played. And we will set these parameters from our player controller script. So now let's create a blend tree. Right click, click on create state and from new blend tree. Okay, I'll name the blend tree as idle and double click to open. So first we will change the blend type to 2D simple directional, choose move X as the first parameter and move Y as the second parameter. And add four motion fields. I will add idle down to the first motion field, idle up to the second, idle left to the third and idle right to the fourth. So the blend tree will decide which of these animations to play based on the value of MoX and MoY. So here we need to specify the value of MoX and MoY at which each animation should be played. So idle down should be played when X is 0 and Y is minus 1. Idle up should be played when X is 0 and Y is 1. Idle left should be played when x is minus 1 and y is 0. And finally, idle right should be played when x is 1 and y is 0. Okay, so now if we change the moves and moi value, we can see that the blend tree changes the animation. So when moves is 1, it's right, just like we specified here. And when the moves is like minus one, it's left. And similarly, when move y is one, it's up. And down when minus one. Okay, so now let's try to set these parameters from our player controller. Okay, so first we need to cache the reference to our animator controller. So we cache the reference to the animator from the awake function. And now, if the input is not zero, then we will set the move X and move Y parameters of the animator. I'll use the set float function of the animator. Name of the parameter is move X. And the value is going to be input dot X. Do the same for move Y. Okay, so now if we test the game, then we move right, the idle right animation will be played. Then we move left, the idle left animation will be played. And same with up and down. And since we are like only setting move X and move Y, if the input is not zero, the player will stay in the previous animation when we are not moving. So when I press left, it will be in the idle down. And even when I stop moving, the player will still 
stay in the idle left animation okay so next let's create blend tree for our walking animation so go back to base layer and here i'll create a new blend tree i'll call it walk change the type to 2d simple directional first parameter should be move x and the second should be move y i'll add four motion fields and finally we'll drag the animations just like we did before So for walk down, x is 0, y is minus 1. A walk up, x is 0 and y is 1. A walk left, x is minus 1 and y is 0. And for walk right, x is 1 and y is 0. Okay, so now let's go back to the base layer. And we need a way to transition between the idle and walk animations. So I'll create a Boolean parameter called is moving. So when is moving is true, we'll create a transition from idle to walk. So click on the transition and in the conditions, change is moving is true. And we have to remove exit time. Otherwise, the transition won't happen until the current animation is completed. And let's also change the transition duration to zero because we want to transition instantly. Now let's create a transition back to idle. And this should happen when it's moving is false. Once again, I'll remove exit time and change the transition duration to zero. So now we need to set is moving from our player controller. So we already have a variable to keep track of whether the player is moving or not. So all we have to do is set that to the animator at the end of update function. Now let's test the game. So you can see that the animations are being played correctly. So I'll stop the video here. And in the next part, we will look at how to add more objects to our tile map and create a town scene. So if you think this video was helpful, please hit that subscribe button. That will mean a lot to me. And I'll see you in the next video.